Hey everyone, it's Thomas here. So today I'm going to talk about these mono blocks from Orchard Audio. They're Class D, 1005 US, and I'm excited about it because for the longest time I've been looking for a power amp that can bring out more the performance from the Shet Freya. You see, Shet Freya for me is a very good preamp. At 700 bucks, well, I don't know about the Shet Freya Plus, the 700 bucks. It was something that impressed me a lot because when I compare it to my own reference gear, yes, there is a difference. Let's be honest about it. But I thought the difference was not like really big. So I knew that the shit for your potential was really high, assuming that you do tube rolling with it. So in the past, I've been when people ask me to recommend power amps, Usually I look at the price of it, I look at the performance that if I've experienced with it, and I'll tell them, yeah, it's good for the price. But in my heart, I knew that these power amp, these budget one, can only bring out a certain potential of the shit Freya. And I, I was hoping that one day I'll get a chance to try something a bit better to really bring out more of that potential from the with the shit Freya. And today's amp will do it. So once again, thanks to Sean from Zero Fidelity. He introduced me to Leo, the owner of the company. And uh, because of him, I got a chance to try these monoblocks. Now these monoblocks are different than the other ones I've tried in the past because they don't use ICE module, Encore, and so forth. They use uh, GAN. So it's very different than what I've tried in the past. Now Leo told me nothing is off the shelf. He designed it. so. He was very confident in this product, so much so that he actually posted the measurements of these monoblock on audio signs. Sure, great measurement, but doesn't mean that it sounds good. Now, for those of you who are looking for that warm, romantic, sweet grandpa sound, this is not for you. Go look for, let's say, the tube integrated amp that I have here, like the KN, for example. Look for a good Class AB amp. Class D is not about that, and I've made a few videos already on Class D, so I'm not going to go back into it. But I will say this, okay, for those of you who have never experienced good Class D, if Jeff Rowland is willing to put Class D on his top-of-the-line $50,000 plus power amp, it should tell you that Class D has come a long way. It is no longer what you think it is. Until you really try at your place, you might want to be open-minded about it. Let's talk about how it sounds overall. I'm just going to condense it and focus on what I find really stands out with these monoblock. The top end, there's a lot of clarity. There's no roll off. So this is where you have to be a bit careful because of its clarity. It could be too much of a good thing depending on the speaker that you have. Now, in terms of mid-range, yes, you have that slight lean sounding mid-range. There is uh, is cool side of neutral, the whole presentation, but there's muscularity in the presentation. And I think it has something to do with the power supply, because unlike those budget Class D amp that I tried that has a power supply of a small coin or something, these actually have these big two external power supply. I'm not an amp designer, so I don't know. I'm just guessing here, but there's definitely more muscle in the presentation. And also the mid range is not silky smooth. It is not sweet, but there's a bit of texture in it. So some people really like that because not everyone wants that silky smooth, sweet, romantic mid range. Some people rather it sound closer to the human voice. Funny, the bass, good control, speed, and there's enough punch with the bass. So you, you have that classic class D advantage when it comes to bass. Now, the strength of these monoblocks, what really stood out is the fact that when it comes to instrument separation, meaning uh, I can hear each instrument clearly, it is fantastic. I will even go as far to say that it is probably better than my own reference gear in this specific instance. I remember the first night when I got it, I actually emailed my friends. I said, wow, because I can hear each instrument so clear, I feel that it enhances the power of the presentation. I don't mean chest pounding visceral bass power. I mean, because of the clarity of each instrument, I feel that the presentation has more energy. Now that took me by surprise. And next thing, with these power amp, you actually have to crank up the volume because the gain on the power amp is actually very, very low. So usually I listen at nine o'clock on my volume knob. I have to turn it to like 12 o'clock or one o'clock. 
So for those of you who want to listen at extreme volume, this might be a problem, but you want to talk to Leo about it because he has different versions of these monoblock. And the goal Leo explained to me is that it increases the, the dynamics. So here I put it on screen what he said, and it's true. Uh, it's like cranking up the volume of your sound system without having the volume cranked up. And it's quite an interesting experience. And that really tests how good your preamp is. So these are not good if you have a passive preamp and some tube preamps. Now, before I continue talking about sound, I want to quickly transition to the areas of opportunity. So number one, I'm not a big fan of four boxes. Number two, I noticed that um, because these amps, you don't power them off, when I am not listening to music, and if I'm close enough to the speaker, I can tell that the speakers are on. It's not his, but you know that there's some noise coming from the speaker if you're close enough, okay? And finally, the startup sequence. When you turn these things on, you have to follow certain steps. So you have to be very careful when handling these power amps. The last one is not an area of opportunity, it's a question of taste. It's the sound, if you're okay with that lean presentation, with the top end slightly expressive. Yeah, I guess that's the way to put it. So when I first got this, uh, these mono block home, I plugged them to my mod, right? LS100, that's my own reference gear. Because in my head, I always think Class D should pair with tubes. This Class D is a bit dry, and this is no exception. With the tubes, it sounded great, as I mentioned. I just wish the vocals was a bit smoother. But, you know, overall, you can't have an amp that does everything. I guess not possible especially at this kind of price. So one day I sat down and I started writing notes for to, to film the video. But this time I decided, you know what, I'm gonna to listen to them without my tube preamp. What happens if I plug it directly to my DAC? Now my DAC is the only DAC that I've ever come across that I would use it both as a preamp and as a DAC. And that's me trying like 10 plus high-end DACs. I never use them as preamp, it's just Something is missing whenever I do that. The extra sound is the only one that I would do it this way. So I plug it to the uh, mono block, and that's when I go like, wow, what happened? It's actually smoother. The vocals are smoother. So I actually email Leo, and I say, okay, something is special about this. What, what, why is this? Turns out these mono blocks are only 5,000 uh, ohms, the input Im impedance. Now, Usually the general guideline is that the output impedance and the input impedance between the preamp and the power amp is 10 times, right? And uh, Leo suggests that I try something, a solid state that has maybe 100 ohms output impedance with my preamp. But I say, well, the exit sound sounded good. And that's where I go like, you know what? The shit Freya is 180 ohms for output impedance. Okay, the mod writes 300. It sounded great, as I said, it's just I wish the vocals was a bit smoother. So when I put the Freya in, I'm like, wow, this is this sounds better than just the extra sound alone. So vocals are smoother than the mod, right? Of course, I give up that like laser sharp instrument separation, but it was a better balance, I feel. So that's where I go, wow, shoot, you know what? I can recommend this with the shit Freya. And then I say, what happened if I put a high-end solid-state preamp with these mono blocks? I'm curious, aren't you? I did. And this is where the part where I go like, wow, this is kind of approaching reference level now because it jumped level up. Now, you might think that, well, obviously, Thomas, you put in a Burmesta preamp. Now, for those of you who don't know what Burmesta is, it's good. The one I have is a vintage one. Well, obviously, it's going to jump level compared to the shit Freya. You know what? I'll tell you yes and no, okay? Now, I'm going to put this table up here. This is my experience. If you take a high-end preamp and high-end power amp, let's label it as A++. Now, I'm not saying the performance is that, okay? I'm just saying, relatively speaking. If I took a shit Freya and I took a, high power, a good power amp, I would say performance is A-. minus. So that's why I'm very impressed with the shit Freya. Now, if you take a shit Freya and you put it with a budget power amp within its category, you know what? For me, the performance is a C. Now, I'm not saying it's performance a C, I'm saying relative to my own reference gear. I'm just trying to give a scale here, okay? Now, 
What I noticed with the shit Freya, if I put in this orchid, I would say the performance is actually a B. So it does level up from the budget gear. But once I put a high end solid state preamp to it, I noticed the performance reaches A. So what I learned here is that, okay, so the matching is very important with this unit. You can either get the very good performance or you can get meh, so-so performance. Even with the audio research preamp, and we tried it with an audio research preamp, it was not a good match. If you have passive preamps, this is not going to work for you. Um, the lower the impedance, the better. And uh, just keep that in mind. So I'm going to end the video at this point. Now, as I said, I was really impressed when I was using it with the Shed Freya. At that point already, I was emailing Leo and I told him, I really like it. I like to recommend it, but my issue is that it's a thousand five and there's no return policy. I really believe that some of the people out there, this is the perfect amp for them, right? If you like that specific sound that I described. As I mentioned, if you like the one that warm, lush sound, go for tubes or go for a class AB. This is not about that. If you bring it home, the first thing you listen for is soundstage, okay? You listen for instrument separation, you listen for speed, you listen for clarity and transparency. That's what you listen for. So I told him, look, I'll do it if you allow five people to return it. That means that the first five people to order this has the option to try it at the home for 30 days. Because what I would like to do is to get this into the hands of people. They can try it, and if they like it, come back and share the experience. Now, if you don't like it, keep in mind what gear are you pairing with. Now, who is this for? So, there are a few group of people, I would say. Now, if you have a shit Freya, and you want something that is better than the budget gears to pair with it, because you want to experience the next level, because the shit Freya potential is high, this will bring up more the potential, more potential of these shit Freya, for example, number one. Number two, um, if you feel the bottleneck in your system is your power amp when driving your speakers. You see, I tried it with uh, three speakers. Silverline Sonata, Pioneer S3X, and uh, Pope Audio LSIM 707 that I highly recommend it. With the 707, it can bring up 80% of the performance with most people, I would say they listen to about 60%, 70 if they're lucky, what this LSIM 707 can do, right? You plug it to a regular AVR, you plug it to budget gear, budget integrated amps. My gear probably can bring out 90% of the 707's potential. I, I say this is because I try a lot of different amps with the 707 and I, I noticed this, you know, it does scales up significantly. Me with Mr. DIY, Mr. Quad, that's what I did. I showcased them budget the medium and the high and uh, because they, they don't try that at, at their home right they have one one system and that's it so when i show it to them the difference in what the amp does to the 707 they were like wow what a difference so the second group of people i recommend it to are the people who own high-end class ab power amps okay listen to my logic here i'm sure there's a group of people who own like four or five thousand dollar class ab power amps are always curious. They have an open mind about Class D. They're not like, oh, Class D sucks. They're open-minded about it because they heard a lot of good things about it. And they see that the, the trend, the market, where high-end gear are using Class D amps. Okay? It, it's just a question of time because it's technology. It evolves, improves. But nobody wants to spend five grand on a Class D amp just to satisfy their curiosity. So this group of people will go out and buy these $500 Class D amp, bring it home, they go, yeah, yeah, Thomas, I see what you're saying. It's good, it's okay. You know, I use it in my second bedroom, I'll drive it once in a while, I'll play with it once in a while, but it's not gonna replace my main unit. If you fall in that group of people and you want to seriously experience what Class D can do, this can be an entry point. Because what you're gonna get with this performance will be very different than your class AB high-end power amp. It might be good enough to the point where you actually spend a week listening out of a month, every month, just this amp. Because, you know, it, it will do things that your class AB amps cannot do. 
So that group of people, I would say, you can give this a try because else you're going to spend your whole life looking for this $500 like budget class D amp and you'll never know what class D can really do. Of course, with that said, it is not the same level as my own reference gear, which is three times more than this, but it is good enough if your preamp matches well with it. Oh, I forgot one important thing that I didn't mention is that for it to sound like really, really, really good, I had to use the Musical Paradise tube DAC that I had. So no matter what in my whole system, I still had to add tubes somewhere in the system for it to sound its best in my room. So with that said, I'll see you guys next time.